Hi everyone, my name is Yash and I'm from India. My name is Charles Ofer. I'm from Ghana, West Africa. My name is Elias Andres Trillos. I'm from Bucaramanga, Colombia. My name is Shi Qi Zhang. That is my Chinese name. I, you can also call me Thomas. I'm from Shanghai, China. I came from India and in India I came from Mumbai. It's a city on the western coast of India. The capital of India. No, that, that's not the capital of India. The capital of India is Delhi. It's like the biggest metropolitan city. It's like Mumbai, Beijing yeah. and Shanghai. Exactly. It's been almost 10 months that I've been in the United States. So I am from uh, Ohio originally and uh, this is my first semester. I came in the, to the US around six years ago. I went to Utah to do my undergraduate. Seven months. It's the first time for me. Um, my name is Carla Olandia and I'm in my third semester, graduating semester. My name is Victoria. I came here in 2012. Stay here for um, 18 months. I'm originally from the Philippines. I was born there. I've been in the U.S. for about a year now. Oh. I came to um, Gainesville. Yeah, I actually live in in Miami. Uh, I've lived in London. Uh, I lived in New York as well, okay. and uh, and spent some time in Florida uh, prior to coming here. That cultural um, difference between behaviors like human behavior in, in uh -huh. Ghana and human behavior here is, is, is very significant. The best part about when I landed uh, in the United States was freedom. Everybody, yeah, you can talk any say you want. Yeah, people are really open. Nobody's like biased. They just evaluate you for the work that you do. It's not about what your personal things are. That's the best thing I like about the US. You know, life in India or in Mumbai, it, it was very fast, you know, like, it was very really fast paced. Miami is, is more or less like a business town. Everyone you know is, is very busy on their way, you know, to maybe work, you know, yeah. trying trying to, you know, um, make something of, of um, themselves. So it, it, it kind of gets it makes them uh, not as warm as they should be. It's here the things are like they go according to their own space. I mean there's no rush. The culture in uh, Ghana as far as the people are concerned is more akin to Gainesville. It's very nice, very warm, yeah. very receptive. Okay. very um, helpful. Every time you say, hey, how are you doing? They say, yeah, good. <laughs> very optimistic people. I like air quality, sunshine in Florida. Yeah, and always like the alarm. <laughs> Fire <laughs> alarm. Fire. Yeah, okay. all the time. <laughs> That's really a difference. Uh, you become more independent and you will love to, like, you have to do everything on your own over here in the United States. They're definitely more dependent on their parents because in the Philippines, a lot of them choose to go to colleges, but still close to their family. The culture is, it's more of a family oriented, wherein you stay along with your family, celebrate all the festivals. They're a lot less independent than what we have here in America, because you know a lot of students, they move out states away, and they kind of just learn to pick up, sort of identify how they're different, and so they become more independent. So one of the most important things that I learned was how to do everything on my own and be responsible for whatever I do. I feel like um, anxiety and you know, nervous. A little tough because I came during the winter season in Utah so it was snowing every day and I had to walk for like 30 minutes to take the bus and then take one hour bus to my school. I was just learning English when I came here and the culture in Utah was also completely different to Colombian culture, especially because they have a different religion in Utah. So it was very different for me and during the first months I was really missing my country and it was really hard. Nobody got a come to point out a way for you. And that's kind of charming of the United States. You, nobody will give you a way. You have to figure it out by yourself. So, if you are brave and courage, so it's 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 just perfect for you. This place. Hey, now it's looking like a visa interview. <laughs> <laughs> when I completed my undergrad, there was a trend of global exposure all over mm. the world. So you know, uh, just doing undergrad wasn't enough. Then you know, we had to add something more. For higher education, okay. going abroad is a common thing in India. The culture, US culture is 
everywhere now. I had a few countries on the uh, on my mind, but like U U.S. seemed the most uh, appropriate because uh, first of all, U.S. is like globally known. Secondly, you know, uh, being in U.S. Uh, would grant me the global exposure, which no other country would. I also considering go to like Australia or Canada, but. I think the U.S. is a challenging place. Everybody got a U.S. dream here. When I was a kid, my dream was to have to create my own business, an international business, and that was the main reason why I came to the U.S. Because here we have a lot of resources, a lot of uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems all over the U.S. So it's much easier to start a business, to get investors, to create partnerships. There's a lot of resources, and it's the best place on earth to create a business and that's the main reason why I came here. I really think that I've developed myself as a person, as a professional, yeah. and that was the main reason to come here, you know, to develop myself. It's a very huge difference. In China, even in university, we have our own classes. For example, in one class, we have 40 people. Oh. So, yeah, we have the same courses every time, every schedule. I'm free to choose my subjects and make schedule my own timetable. So that this works with me working part time somewhere else and scheduling my courses. So basically that is one of the most important advantages. Why do graduate students come over to US to make a bright career for themselves? If you go to Seattle, to the, those uh, software company, you see a lot of Chinese or Indian. So mm -hmm. it's already mixed. That's why I like the US. You can, maybe you're born not in a very high level, but yeah. after hard work and yeah, everybody oh, yeah. is the same. When, when I was in China, uh, I had a lot of friends and I can always get sports from my families. In, in anyways, but here, as the first time I feel so, you know, lonely and helpless but later I figured out find actually there are a lot of resources and people you can reach out to find more ways to make things happen. I was really shy, really not very sociable when I came here but since I came here to the US I've been growing and opening more to people and now I'm very sociable and like to you know going to a lot of meetings, events. Uh, to me, it's not one specific way to make all these things happen. A lot of events here, around here, you can just go. And a lot of clubs, you just join. No matter it's just a sports club. Like I joined um, outdoor adventure clubs. Actually, a lot of, because they're all from UF. They have diverse background, like from PhD professor, undergraduate. When you start knowing these people, you can find uh, more ways to know more people. It helps me to know a lot of people, okay. share the same interests, and later we talk more about careers. Well, um, actually in the Philippines, my mom, she has nine sisters, okay. and I approximately have like four to five cousins from uh -huh. each hand, mm -hmm. and so um, being in the Philippines, like I had a lot of family always with me, yeah. and so uh, growing up, I had a lot of memories with my family. Mm -hmm. And moving here, that was the biggest adjustment because <laughs> I went from all of that family, all of that noise, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, hanging out with all of them, um, to just me and my parents and my sister. Okay. So that was the biggest adjustment I had to fix. Here, I spend more time walking out in the gym or play basketball or doing more sports. In China, maybe I maybe stay inside or read books or watch movies. Okay. Not very okay. outgoing. Yeah. When you first came to UF uh, and from the ISOM program, did you already had this idea that you would be seeing so many international students in your class? I was very, very, very surprised. <laughs> it was kind of a uh, culture shock. I actually thought there would be more students from the United States. However, what I see over here is a completely corner scenario of what I thought. I actually did have that uh, idea uh, because working in uh, business prior to this, uh, in this type of program, I found that there are a lot more international students that tend to go towards this field. I have groups where like, the majority of my, my group, group mates are 
maybe Asian. Okay. And yeah, and for example, in groups such as those, you you immediately like notice a certain difference in in how maybe someone like me from West Africa would maybe mm -hmm. kind of comport myself, and how someone from from maybe China would would you know work. I noticed that some people they like to do it as early as possible, and there's some that uh -huh. uh, like to do it as the latest as possible. <laughs> okay. So um, I've noticed it's it varies from. Culture to culture. Just relax and, and just take the, <laughs> the project one like block at a time. Yes. You know, my, my, my group mates were all you know very, very serious, very intense, looking to <laughs> complete like the, the entire project in like yeah. two days. And okay. yeah, that, 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 that was something like I had to kind of adjust to, I had to kind of be flexible enough to, to yeah. match yeah, mm -hmm. those different, uh, those different um, energies. The most important thing that I learned was uh, presentation skills from the Americans. People think in a very detailed way, step by step. I, I like that. That's really good. Americans are like uh, more uh, extroverts, I think. Like they are, they can easily talk with people. Yeah. Maybe because this is their country and we are the, we are the outsiders here. About Chinese, I have seen that they are, they are like, I, what I think is like they are silent people, I mean. If you think that they don't know anything or they can't do anything, but like they are the ones who, you know, even they, they do things very efficiently. Hardworking, so very diligent. A lot of the Oriental Asians also work rather hard mm -hmm. and intensely, as do a lot of like, the uh, Indian students. Uh, which, uh, not to say that the Americans don't work so hard, but they tend to, they really put their hours in. I think a little bit more maybe than Americans. Oh, Chinese are good at math. <laughs> yeah, some of my American friends just, they forgot to bring their calculator for the finest. They asked me, hey, Thomas, do that. <laughs> then I take out my own calculator. I have to use that. Also, it's ma also made in China. <laughs> yeah. Indians are like, what do I say about Indians? <laughs> I'm an Indian. <laughs> maybe I should be asking you that question. Like, how do you find Indians different from others? <laughs> Indians, I think it's a combination between Asian people, but also a little bit westernized. Oh, okay. maybe that's because we are because we are like in the middle, you know, like US, India, and China. That's why we are the combination. You know, one student from Ghana here, uh, Charles, yes. and uh, he had said like a lot of people believe that you know because he's from Africa or you know because it's African culture that um, uh, everyone is kind of living in uh, desolate or that's what some that's what a lot of I think Americans tend to. to say or something like that or think. As 10, 15 years, things, things have changed so much. Uh, but he kind of uh, explained to me and actually another Chinese student that it's, you know, it's a very prosperous country. Yeah, China is, uh, now is uh, well developing. Uh, still people think China is very poor, but now, no. What makes it so prosperous and he was telling me about. The, the Ghanaian government actually has like done a very good um, job like promoting the, the education of the girl girl child and trying to change like the mentality of like people. Yeah. So I mean yeah now things 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 are extremely different now. You know, I asked a lot of questions about you know, how do things actually work there, you know, in terms of politics and economics and everything and, and what's what's life day to day and he was able to kinda of go through that with me. And uh, I enjoy listening to that. Usually, uh, Eastern culture are pretty shy people. Chinese yeah. people are very shy. But one time, once you get know each other, you're very friendly, warm. But here, people maybe in the beginning, they're very already very friendly. Hi, how are you doing, my friend, my dear? Yeah, that's the culture shock. That's why some you see a lot of Chinese people, ch student, my friend, maybe very shy to talk. Actually, they have the passion inside, <laughs> but yeah, but they don't speak a lot. But I've noticed that a lot of Indians tend, tend to be shy, not to like the public spotlight. They, they tend to be introverted. They don't want attention to kind of like focus on them. It's a slightly similar situation back in um, Ghana also, where even at, at a very young age, Right, the the child is like kind of taught to uh, be quiet and then listen rather than to like talk and express. A lot of like the Oriental Asian cultures, they tend to be a lot more inclusive. Uh, so it's like uh, when another asks a question or uh, needs a little help, they're very very anxious to, to help another individual. I, I'm very unfamiliar with the American culture. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because. Even regardless of um, what you may see on um, TV or even what someone may, may even tell you, 
it, it once you, you've not experienced the culture for yourself, it's okay. almost impossible to grasp the full extent or the full complexity of, of, of the, the okay. American culture. It's because uh-huh. it's so complex because there are so many different people yeah. living here. There are people mm-hmm. from all over the world living in just this one one place. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a very complex culture, and oh. I would say I'm still new new to it. I mean, there are so many things I've not done that the regular American or the average American would probably take like for granted. Americans call, you know, they have different words for certain things. Mostly language and the culture. That's one thing which you notice that, you know, while talking with an American, if you like, I, I faced this when I came here for the first time. So I, I went to uh, do my gate one card and I was at the counter and I asked her like, um, do you have the, you know, they have water fountains here to drink water. So. I thought that was called sprinklers. <laughs> I asked her, like, I was thirsty, so I asked the lady at the counter, like, do you have a water sprinkler here? So she's like, why would you need a water sprinkler? So I said that I'm thirsty. Yeah. So she said, uh, son, water sprinkler are the one in the garden. <laughs> Maybe you're looking for a water fountain. We're like, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> It's my hometown. I, I especially miss the food. It's Chinese food. <laughs> the food. The food. F O O D. The food. <laughs> it's really hard to find spicy food here. You go to a restaurant, you ask them for spicy food, they give you spicy food, but it's not spicy. <laughs> okay, I can only find Panda Express here, yeah. which is not very traditional Chinese food. This is American yeah. Chinese food. Uh-huh. Me, personally, I think it's the Chinese egg pancake. Which is a pancake with eggs, with yeah, just like a samosa from India. Oh. I really like the paneer India yes. food. Off. We definitely use a lot of meat in our um, cooking. Uh, we have milaga, which is sort of a beef stew. It has potatoes, it has beef in it, and then a little bit of vegetables and then a broth. Okay. And then you, but most all of our meals, you have to eat it with rice. We eat beans a lot. With plantain, yeah, mm-hmm. fried fried plantain. My my favorite food actually is is a kind of it's a bean stew with okay. fried plantain. That I do miss is the entire family. Whenever I do visit, I get to spend a lot of time with them. Any special occasion, say your birthday or your first salary over here in the United States. Yeah. So this is where you expect your family to be around with you, where you can share or you can buy gifts for your yeah. family with mm-hmm. your son. I really miss my family, especially right now. Is really bad in China, and I worry a lot about them. Mm. We are not born to be a skilled laborer, or maybe something like that. We came here because we have dream, not because we are lost. Okay. You were, you were born to do something different. Mm-hmm. So what do you expect to do? Is like just explore yourself. Just go ahead. What do you want to do? And this place is great, really great. So okay. only academics won't like won't help you in life. Yeah. So, do whatever you want to do in life, it's not academics. Be brave and open-minded. Don't be shy, because like a lot of people worry about language problems. Also, the language, you cannot express from the bottom of your heart what you think, uh, yeah, what you want to say. That's the most uh, difficult part, I think, for most international students. I would say definitely practice. When they're talking with the, with their friends, if they like speak in English, it will help them a lot because that's how I learned English. Be open-minded. Uh, always look out for any opportunities that you can find. And take advantage of anything that the school offers. Like keep contacting people. And you don't be afraid to be rejected. I mean, but if you just stay at home, of course, nobody gonna come to you. Not just part time job, if you want anything, if you want a full time job or if you want um, good grades, you have to take those efforts, you know. I mean, people won't come to you and say, oh, you know what, we're hiring, why don't you work for us? Uh, maybe more Chinese students will join the AIS organization. Okay. Maybe maybe we focus more on our like uh, studies or internship. Maybe we don't spend much time to join the activities, I think, yeah. But yeah, that's what we, ch- we should change in, uh, in ourselves. We need to yeah, spend more time coming here. Don't be shy and to attend all the events. If you start attending all the events, you'll be like very involved, you'll make new friends. Then once you are involved, you'll have more opportunities coming to you. I- I'm sure everybody already 
realize networking is more important here. Here in America, it's very different. Like you not only have to do well in school, but you also have to be able to sell yourself in front of a recruiter. You have to be comfortable. You won't get anything like served to you right away. You need to do you need to do efforts. You need to flap your wings if you want something. If you have a will, you have a strong ambition. You can still find a job. Uh, have a good performance in the interview. It depends on your personality. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Okay. So just you do are, you it. Are Don't wait for the day that the, oh man, when I'll be like 40, I'll do community service. When I'll be that, I'll do this. Just do it. Now, when I look back, I don't think that. Uh, I don't know these people uh, from long time. It's like, yeah, we all knew each other since, you know, from from long time. So that's how the, our friendship has grown over a period of just seven months, I guess. But yeah, we all like to hang together, you know, because all of us like are away from their families, and you know, there's a need to you know fill that void, you know. Everyone misses their family, so if we all stay together, you know, we we don't miss them that much. So I think that's that's the reason you need friends. Around the world, around the globe, around the globe. I'm saying goodbye. Don't.